Ontario's housing minister says he is taking responsibility for a lack of oversight in a controversial land swap. A report found Steve Clark should be reprimanded for his role in the deal involving the Greenbelt. But Premier Doug Ford is continuing to defend his minister, and it remains unclear if Clark will face any consequences. CBC's Lorenda Redekop has more. To Ontarians, I want to say very sincerely that I apologize. Housing Minister Steve Clark says he's sorry for not having better oversight of his now former chief of staff. The Auditor General had found in her report it was his chief of staff, Ryan Amato, who brought forward certain developers' plans that land they owned in the Greenbelt be opened for housing. That could result in an $8 billion increase in their property values. The Integrity Commissioner wrote, It may seem incredible that Minister Clark would have chosen to stick his head in the sand on such an important initiative, but I believe that was exactly what he did. Clark was asked why he doesn't resign. I'm here to accept responsibility, um, Richard, for um, the lack of oversight I had in the process. All three opposition parties say Clark must go. The NDP put together a video of him while in opposition, calling for a Liberal minister to resign. There are numerous ministers who have stepped down when they've been named in an investigation. Earlier, Premier Doug Ford took questions for the first time since this report came out. Yeah, I have confidence in Minister Clark. He has a big file. I take full responsibility. The buck stops with me. Clark has also said the buck stops with him. But at this point, there don't appear to be any consequences. The Premier did talk tough when it comes to developers benefiting from the land swap, like one that tried to sell. The government announcing yesterday that land will be returned to protected status. If you don't follow the rules, you don't build homes, you don't start getting shovels in the gr ground, guess what? You're done, you're gone, test me out, try me again, you're going back in the green belt. He also got testy towards a reporter after this question. At what point do, do you take personal responsibility here and how are people to have trust in your leadership? The Premier's answer turned into an unusual attack. A year down the road, if we don't have the homes, you're the first person that's going to be up here saying, why didn't you build the homes? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? We're going to build homes. We're going to build homes until people have the same opportunity that you have. You have a nice home down the street. All this as another report is still to come. This one focused on the Premier and his daughter's wedding events that developers attended. The Integrity Commissioner's office is still considering whether to investigate, but it will issue a report whatever it decides. The other big question is whether the RCMP will investigate. Lorenda Redekop, CBC News, Toronto. Let's continue the conversation now with Lydia Miljan. She is a political science professor at the University of Windsor, and we reached her in that city tonight. So, Lydia, thank you for making some time. Today, you saw Housing Minister Steve Clark. He said he accepts responsibility, but has made no indication that he's going to step down from his position. So, what do you make of all this? Why, he held a press conference today. We thought maybe he was going to resign at this conference, but he was just there taking questions and being yelled at by the media. Yeah, I'm glad I didn't put money on that one because I, I actually thought that he was going to step down. Though, you know, having said that, the premier did, you know, give him his full throat of support this morning. So he kind of signaled that uh, the minister was just going to provide media availability and take the public flogging. Um, it's unfortunate that they're they're allowing this to continue as long as it is. I mean, I think that not having him resign or step down is just going to make this a, 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 a terrible political story for them. Why do you think the premier has his back so strongly on this? I don't know, because I recall back in the pandemic, he had a finance minister who just went on vacation, <laughs> albeit during during lockdown, um, but he hauled him back into Canada and said, you're out. Uh, you know, so Rod Phillips had to resign for something I think is not quite as egregious as the allegations of the Greenbelt. So it really doesn't make sense that he... He wants to maintain this minister, except for the fact that he, he's, he's, he's sticking to his story, that the most important thing is to get housing built, and it would be too much for them to uh, change ministers at this time. Now, obviously, they're putting themselves in a very vulnerable position because now it's going to be if they can't get those shovels in the ground, if they can't get the housing built in time before the next election or they don't have families in those homes, uh, then this is really going to come back to haunt them. The Integrity Commissioner's report, it also said that the housing minister's former chief of staff, 
Staff Ryan Amato was spearheading the green belt selection process unsupervised and untrained, right? So what does this tell us about operations inside this government then? Yeah, it, it tells me that they, I mean, I'll, I don't know the whole government. Obviously, yes. this portfolio is this a mess. This file, yes. Um, and, it's a mess. And so <laughs> you, you, fire, you fire your chief of staff, which means you're going to have to get a new chief of staff, mm -hmm. hopefully somebody with more experience. Um, but moreover, they also have signaled that they're going to be changing the process, making it more robust. So that's a lot of moving parts that they're going to have to deal with, in addition to making sure that there are, you know, not just houses built in, in these areas, but houses built throughout the province. I mean, every municipality uh, in this province is having a housing squeeze and, and homelessness doesn't just happen in Toronto, it happens in all sorts of other cities. So I think we're being overly focused on Toronto and not talking about the bigger issue. And so, you know, is is this minister up for the task? We'll have to see in the, in the months to come. You know, the premier appears to be taking this ethics probe in stride. How do you think this whole strategy he's using is playing out? Because today he was even forcefully pushing back against some of the reporters. Yeah, his strategy is to turn it on its head and to simply say, you know, the cause is so great. You know, yes, mistakes were made, but we have our eye on the prize. We understand that this is that we have a housing crisis. And, you know, he gets teary and he talks about how, you know, he really has the best intentions. And, and I think that in some respects is, is good on him. He does show that humanity. That's why people, you know, people get upset with him, but then he reels them back in <laughs> because he's just so good at being human, like he's vulnerable. Um, and I think that's quite charming for, for uh, especially for his base. So I think, uh, you know, if he can, you know, keep the humanity in his voice, um, keep the good intentions and allow this minister perhaps to, to clean up his act and really prove himself, things could turn around. But that's a big risk. And obviously the opposition are going to be continually attacking them uh, every chance they get. Yeah, they're, they're screaming out for accountability. Let's finish with this. You know, the premier is defending the green belt Lanswap by reaffirming his commitment to build more housing. You were mentioning this earlier in our conversation. But the issue, I think, for the public here is the fact that the developers are set to make billions on the deal. So how do you think this is going to land with Ontarians over the long term in the midst of a cost of living crisis we're all going through? Well, I think they're probably going to sell it as, you know, certainly developers make money, but they are in the business of making money. People need to feed their families, and, and when they make billions, they're also creating jobs. So mm -hmm. there's that two edges to it, right? You're going to say that you have both the ability to get people in homes, but in addition, you're also having high-skilled, high-paying jobs and the ability for people to afford those. So I think that that tends to work in their favor. They're, they're going to be, they're, they're savvy enough to spin that one uh, positively for themselves. And quickly, before I let you go, any consequences you think for this government? In the short term, obviously, they're taking a big hit. Mm -hmm. um, they're banking on the fact that it's August. <laughs> you know, maybe just <laughs> you and I are paying attention, a few other people. Um, and, and and we're three years away from an election. So they're, they're hoping that we're going to forgive and forget. Um, and we'll have to see really what happens, you know, over the course of time. There's going to be you know, politics is a lot of things happen a very short time. It, it seizes our attention, uh, but we tend to forget, um, especially three years down the road. So we'll have to see. Good point, Saul, and we'll probably be bothering you again about this. Lydia Miljan is a political science professor at the University of Windsor. Thank you, Professor. Thanks, Dwight.